Today on Critics Talk, Joaquin Phoenix's Joker movie officially wraps. We get in Wrong Burgundy Anchorman podcast. And despite no Avengers 4 trailer, it's been a pretty big week for Marvel. Stay tuned. Welcome to Critics Talk, episode 4 0. Where my fault is, shout it. Hey, yo, this is. Your host, Miguel Miggs, alongside the one and only Clep. How you doing, Clep? I'm doing great. I'm doing great as always. We Clep. made it for 40 episodes. 40th episode, bro. This is this is a uh, an anniversary, maybe. Yeah, I guess you could say. Yeah, man. How was your week, Clep? My week was cool. It was cool. Um, caught up on some, some older flicks that I haven't gotten a chance to brush up on and uh, sad to say, some were let down, some are cool, but other than that, I'm good. Damn, son. Yeah, you know, I'm super curious. It's, been, it's like the holiday season, so you know, it's like all Christmas movies all week. Yo, Merry Christmas to all the critics out there. It's a little early for that. We can we can hold well, on. We're, nah, we're, we're gonna bring them a special we're, Christmas episode. We're past Thanksgiving. I put on the the radio in my car the other day, and Mariah Carey was singing. Oh, so like you know it's Christmas. Listen, bro. when that song drops, you have no choice but to want to like rush to the nearest mall and just spend all buy, your money. Buy something at Macy's for someone, whether it's yourself or someone else. <laughs> it feels like that song's constantly playing in the background <laughs> at Macy's. It's crazy. Yo, Clep, so so tell me, what have you been watching, bro? Um, let's see. I mean, like I said, it's been Christmas week. I've, yeah. been, I've been watching a lot of Christmas movies. Family Vacation, Christmas Vacation. <laughs> I, you know what? Family Vacation actually has been on, but it came on before Thanksgiving when I watched it. It was on TV. But uh, The Santa Claus, Tim Allen. Yeah, classic. All three, I've been watching that. Um, classic. Yo, he did the whole trilogy. Yeah, listen, that's a classic. You, 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 you can't go wrong with that. And then Is I, um, Jonathan Taylor Thomas in any of those? No, no. Yo, JTT, he's in everything, bro. <laughs> Every, he was in everything in the nineties. That kid was like, he was like Fred Savage. What happened? Like, <laughs> he was supposed to be the next big thing. Like, like he was supposed to be what Macaulay Culkin was, by, like in the early nineties. Listen, I, I just think he just grew up. You know what I mean? Like, he got too old too fast, and they grow up ugly and shit. Well, like, <laughs> what the fuck? That's what happens when you're a child star. I mean, I don't know what happened to Michael B. Jordan. He lucked up, but when you're a child was star, he a child star? Yeah, he was on the wire. Your show, yo. He was on the wire. Yeah, he got. Who did he play? He got. He got murked. He was the kid and got killed. He had the braids. Yo, the, 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 the. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> he was the good kid. Yeah, good man. Well, I forget his name. It was like some geeky name. Yo. Was it like Melvin? Something. It was like yeah, some geeky yo, name. That's wild, yeah. bro. I never put two and two together. Oh, that boy was ugly. Yo. He was an ugly child star. Yo, shout out to the wire, man, for bringing <laughs> us future stars. To this day. Listen, everybody thinks that Michael B just came out of nowhere, bro. Now he earned those stripes. He's been, he, yo, he was out in Baltimore, son. Yeah. The toughest hoods. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, other than that, and then I ended up watching uh, Equalizer 2, which was a big letdown. Man. Damn, Denzel. Yeah, man. You're not feeling it no more, huh? I, I mean, I thought it would have been a good franchise, but I feel like this movie was forced. They needed, they needed motivation, and they just kind of just dug as deep as they could to get this guy to get back in kill mode and it was just not enough it wasn't emotional enough damn for me. bro so you you yeah. weren't feeling mr mccall no i like the the idea of it but that sequel was pretty weak you know what i remember watching that in uh in the theater and i enjoyed myself you know the second one yeah mm. i went on there bro it was like early morning matinee just dumb early look listen to how you're setting up that tone though Early morning matinee, yeah, less than less than bro, ten dollars. I'm like, yeah, less bro. than ten dollars on a on a. Oh, it was it was free. It was movie pass time. You, you know what you I mean? Know? So it's like I wouldn't care either. I probably, and you didn't watch it on that big ass screen with the ambience and everything. Yeah. Yeah, of course I'm gonna be like, yeah, that was better than expected. It was. I, I watched it. it on my couch and I was like, nah, what? No. Nah. Did you like the action sequences though? What like, action? I, I like whenever he's like starts keeping time. You know what I mean? That's that, always that cool. literally only happened like once in the movie. The opening scene was yeah. dope too. That train scene. That was the know, only scene he it goes happened. Get that that little girl that's getting kidnapped by her father. That's what I mean. That was the only time it happened, and then the rest of it was like drawn out storyline. He's a, he's a big brother to a, a little hoodlum kid, yeah. and then he ends up in a shootout. He does on the, on the ocean by his old crib. That's what I mean. It was just in the middle of like a, a hurricane. You know what it was? It felt like it felt like they took a, a piece of the Jason Bourne story. It was like, what's the only way to take this guy down? You got to put him against 
others like him. Yeah, and it was like his boys and and hey, a, a dude who's we're big fans of Pedro Pascual. Yeah, yeah, there, he was right? good in that. Bro, he he's good. he's always good. Bro. Yeah, he was like, good. Like I haven't seen anything that I'm like, yo, what's good with Pedro, bro? Yeah, that guy, he's he's got good villain potential, mm-hmm. like. And uh, he's like he's been a good guy, like a, a, a good good guy too. Like I've seen him over in uh. When, when when I first saw him was actually Game of Thrones, you know he was mm. a good guy then. He was like a tough good guy, you know, stupid, yeah. but you know, <laughs> you gotta watch Game of Thrones eventually, Clef. I will. I mean, like I said, I made so far I'm at seven episodes of season one. Bro, talking about Game of Thrones, the author mm-hmm. George R. R. Martin, yeah, his new show just dropped, and we gonna be talking about that. I, yes, I'm talking about Night Flyers on Sci-Fi Club. You know, Migs is hype. So, so this guy's already getting deals before like the books even become popular. You know what, Clep? No, no, it's an old book, but George R. R. Martin's in a great spot because he's one of those authors mm-hmm. that he's like pop culture you know everybody yeah. knows his name yeah you know game of thrones did that for him yeah and like he has tons of work coming out you know what i mean in the future now is this set in the same time or is this something no different? this is a whole completely okay. different story okay. so you know, I this might is be able space to... baby also oh, this one's space so we go this from medieval is, times to space this is the future okay this is the future and i want to get into it but not right now but, okay uh, we will eventually uh, yes we will but uh tell me more about uh, equalizer bro because like yo Denzel can't do any wrong in my eyes. He can in this one, yeah. <laughs> in my eyes. Like like I said, it just was boring. It didn't really, it didn't interest me. Like you know what it is? I don't know, man. I just I I, I enjoy Man on Fire. Cool. Like that classic. that's a classic, classic Denzel movie. And th- this just didn't bring it. Like like it, it's this feels like it was supposed to be that kind of tone, but it just didn't bring it. I just feel like the the motivation was weak, and. They didn't. They didn't give us the same flair that the first one gave us. You know what? Like I know they're really trying to make a, a franchise out of this. I believe this is a Sony produced film. I think there'll be another one. There'll be I another think one. so too. You know what I mean? Like I remember it performed decent in theaters, and uh, like I said, people love Denzel, so mm. they'll go and. Uh, then the stakes aren't the anything. stakes aren't really risen enough for him, man. I feel like they're afraid to like go there with him and. Like yeah, he's an old guy, so it's like, what can you really do? You he's can't, like, he's doing lift. You can't really do like the Martin Riggs to him, you know what I mean? Like you can't capture him and electrocute him underwater. Oh damn! Leave the weapon. Come on, look it up, man. No, I know. It's awesome, <laughs> I'm like, I just, too old for I just, this I just, shit, I just, but I just feel like he's just like he's walking through this, like, like we get it, dude. You're badass, he's but special service, special, special forces. forces, yeah, yeah but like, he was going up against like four or five guys who were just as deadly as him, if not younger. And he just walked it right just, through them. His like old it, squad, his old yeah, unit. Yeah, but they walked through. He walked through them all like it was nothing. No, it was a tough fight. Wh- where the whole the the closing finale, that whole scene he when took, he goes back every, home. He took every single one of them out like nothing. No, not by nothing. He had to isolate one by one. Oh my god! You know what, yo? For the critics out there, why don't you go in and and make your old mind? When it comes to Denzel and the Equalizer well, Two, you got my my opinion. Clef doesn't too. like it. I thought it was a decent flick. I like Denzel. I don't like Equalizer Two. Yeah, what's your favorite Denzel movie? I know you mentioned Ooh. Man on Fire, but you, are you a Training Day guy? Yeah, I'm a Training Day, but I I go back. I'm are you old a school. Book of Eli I'm, guy. I'm old school. Say Denzel, Philadelphia though. right now, Club. I could say Philadelphia, <laughs> but I'm gonna say Malcolm X. Oh, okay, okay. Malcolm Little's transformation. Yeah. Okay, I give you yeah. that. Fist in the air. Okay, damn. <laughs> damn. <laughs> Malcolm X was it was a shit. It was dope. Yeah, I like Training Day though. I like Training Day. Cool. I like Training Man on cool. Fire. Man on Fire was cool too. Yeah. What cool else too. am I missing? Have, you know, I haven't seen Fences. Fences is dope. Fences is dope. Fences was really good. It just was too short. What's the new one that he's like the um he's like the lawyer. The lawyer. Yeah, he's a lawyer. Um. Esquire or something Esquire. Oh, with a wig. Yes. Yeah. The, yeah. Yes. Have the you wig. seen that? I haven't seen that I one. I haven't seen that either. But um, Mark D saw it and he liked it. Yeah. But like I said, bro, Denzel can't do no wrong. Right now, I just started uh, season four of Ballers. I only watched like 10, 15 minutes, but his kids in it. Oh he's yeah. Really good. That's the kid from Black Klansman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's, yeah. yeah. He's, uh, I forget his first. I name. watched that. That was pretty decent. It wasn't did bad. you? Yeah, I did watch that. Nice. Did you um, watch that in theater or at home? I watched it at home. I watched nice. it. Here. Yeah, it's not bad. Um, yeah, 
I like Clyde. I like, but he sounds just like his dad. He does sound like a lot. voices, like, like, it, like identical. In, in the later, in his later years, you yeah. know, like it's kind of like, whoa, we, did we just get another Denzel? It's like, so weird because like he doesn't really look like him, but the voice is like, oh my god, like he sounds just like him. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, Clep, let's get into it, bro. Let's do it. Last week. I told you that, you know, I got that sweet deal on the Hulu, right? Mm-hmm. So I've been watching some Hulu stuff. Okay, me too, but go ahead. So I have to go right to the originals because this is the stuff that you can't find anywhere else. Yep. Right? Mm-hmm. And recommendation from my D, I had to check out Future Man. Yep. Future Man is a comedy produced, directed by Seth Rogen mm-hmm. and his boy Evan Goldberg. You know, these dudes go Great comedic back. duo. Great comedic duo. Yeah, these dudes get, go back to super bad, you know, all, all these movies that, like, Green Hornet, right? Like, all these movies, mm-hmm. you know? Like, mm-hmm. they, they work together on it, the script and all that, and that's what they're doing. Preacher, you know, that's oh, yeah, another yeah, that's another, another show that's Which is on, like, produced by season. them. What? Yeah, well, no, Preacher yeah. is going on fourth, right? Yeah, it's on their fourth season. Oh, it's crazy. been around for a while. Huge. Well, listen, yep. uh... Mark D told me, hey, man, you got to watch Future, man. It's really funny. It's right up your alley. Man, it was hilarious. I really enjoyed it. Mark D's going to kick my ass because he's been trying to get me to watch this forever. Yeah, and you still haven't budged. There's huh? so much other shit to consume, man. There is a lot. It's not that I don't want to. It's just I got to be in the right tone for it. And mm-hmm. now that you've seen it, now I now I feel compelled. I have to see it now. Clep, I want to say each episode is like an hour I could be I could be wrong though, but there's only ten of them. Yeah. But they're good though. Like, okay, so the whole uh, premise of it, right? Okay. This dude, uh, what's his name? Josh Hutchinson, mm-hmm. right? Like he he did uh, Hunger Games. Yep. Yep. What yep. else has he been on? Uh, I know him from when like he was like younger. Like yeah, he's do Disney movies and stuff, right? Um, people know him more from the Hunger from Games. From the Hunger too, Games, but he played, P- he played Peta in there. But yeah, basically, yeah, 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 he plays yeah. this janitor who's obsessed with this one video game, right? Mm-hmm. No one's ever beat the video game. So they do, like, the last Starfighter type of situation, you know? Mm-hmm. He beats the video game. Turns out this it's just a test. It was sent from the future mm-hmm. just to see who can who could do this and, and, and go back and, and be humanity's salvation. So the minute he beats it, Two time travelers show up, be like, "Hey, man, you're the future man. We've been waiting for you. You're you're gonna save us." But he's like, "Dude, I play video games. Like, I'm not trained to do none of this stuff." Mm-hmm. And what proceeds to happen? It's you know a lot of funny stuff. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he tries to save the world and humanity's future. So it's like a gamer version of Bill and Ted. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of time travel. You know, they're always going back and forth between the 40s and 50s. Oh, that's 60s. good. So it's Legends back of Tomorrow. To I like that. Yes, it's but it's funny. Time you know, travel's good when it's done right. They get away with a lot because it's you know Hulu. Okay. Yeah, it's Hulu, so they get away with a lot. You know, a little cursing here and there. It's uh, TVMA. You know, it's not okay. big hits. I'm definitely gonna check this out. Definitely check it out. And, and just so we know, this kid, he's 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 no he's notable. He's got a lot of good stuff. Yeah, man. It's Journey to the Center of the Earth. Oh, great. With Zathora. The Rock, right? Zathora. Come on, man. Yeah. Zathora. He's been That's... around forever, bro. Yeah. Yeah, Josh Hutchinson, uh, Future Man. We get a, a few other people there. I'm thinking season two is dropping pretty soon, too. So, like, if you're scared of getting into a new show because you don't know if it's just gonna get canceled, like many of our favorites recently just did, that's like no one's safe, man. Yeah, no one is safe. Uh, but yeah, they, we they're getting a season two, so don't worry about that. Go watch and enjoy enjoy yourself for watching Future Man. Yeah, that season two, just for you guys know, it airs on uh, January 10th. Yeah, it's right around the corner, man. Right around the corner. Yo, Clep. Yes, sir. You mentioned it's been a big big week for marvel it has been a big week for marvel. talk to me bro why why well i mean there was talk in the beginning of the week that you know there was going to be two trailers dropping this week Ooh. not one but two trailers Ooh. uh one was going to be monday night football halftime show captain marvel wednesday which is tomorrow mm-hmm. we we're supposed to get avengers 4 premiere and the break the breaking title for this movie um, we still don't know what that is, huh? Yeah, no one knows what that is. What's but, your speculation, Clep? 
Um, Annihilation Endgame? No, I actually think it's going to be called The New Avengers. The New Avengers. I, that's that's my... I'm going to go with Assemble. Avengers Assemble? Yeah. I'm going to go with The New Avengers. I'm sticking to The New Avengers. Okay. Um. Yeah, I'm sticking to that. The New Avengers. The New Avengers, which is a comic series. If you people know, you look it up. The New Avengers. It's a big deal. Um. But we didn't get... We, then they said that the, the, the trailer for Avengers 4 may be pushed back again because of, you know, salute, respect for our former president, George Bush. R.I.P. Who, George who, Sr. Who, who passed away. Um, they said that they, I guess the funeral is tomorrow, I think it is. So mm-hmm. they're going to push back the whole release because think about it. If that trailer drops, it's going to be the only thing people are talking yeah, about. Yeah, you don't want to really do that. That's kind of crazy when you have to <laughs> listen. Out of respect of the president, we're not going to break the Internet with our movie <laughs> it makes sense club you it's, know that's gonna, a lot of respect that a like, corporation but, but what has. i mean is that's how you know when you have a property that's that popular it's huge you can't even over you can overshadow the president yeah you could overshadow the death of a president it's powerful stuff clap i mean wow th- th- there's a reason why this movie's make billions of dollars in a few days you know yeah so despite that happening which everyone is madly disappointed about including myself we still got the captain marvel trailer last night yeah and how Monday. awesome was that clap dude i'm not gonna lie i think this should have been the first trailer i think you're right i enjoy this one way more than i enjoy the first trailer and it it gave us a better look at what captain marvel does and why we should be interested in watching her movie yeah and I, I feel like you think they did it on purpose that way because i really or did they just go back and recut because the first trailer when it dropped which was what last month that that dropped no, two months ago wait yeah at least two months two ago. months ago it didn't do what they expected it to do no. it kind of fizzled like first day well i remember we talked about it on the podcast and for the critics out there you can go back and listen to to whatever episode that was but like, mm-hmm. i remember mentioning how like stone face she was in the whole trailer and this trailer is a lot different. Uh, we get a lot more comedic um, moments from Fury, you know, playing with the cat at the end mm-hmm. to even her just trying to be, you know, punching a old lady. You know, that's funny. Yeah. I mean, I still got that <laughs> You're vibe. You're not supposed to agree, Clap. I still got that vibe from her, though. Like, she's still a little stone faced, a little robotic. I think that will be the whole movie because I remember she's. Eventually, essentially playing an alien in a in an alien planet. And you think that she's gonna kind of be more humanized as Avengers goes around? Absolutely, yes. Yeah, I could see that happening, but I'm really not feeling her her personality right now. Yeah, it's a little Encino manish. Like, she is really... a military person. I believe yeah. she's doing what it's been asked of her. And uh, remember, Brie Larson is fresh of an Oscar, right? So like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, I have faith that she'd be able to portray whatever Marvel is asking her to do. Absolutely, I, you, you're probably right. I'm just being nitpicky. Cause so, I'm a, so what have we seen from this trailer clip that we didn't see prior? Like, I saw a lot more of Homie Jude Law in it. Yep. Um, who who is not? It's weird because they're saying that his character is not Marvel, but when you look at like the characters and the breakdowns on IMDb and such, it says Marvel, but like people are saying that his name is not marvel yeah um so i don't know what's going on there um so we get a bigger a better look at him we also get a look at uh captain marvel's like best friend there's a lot of changes too because the, when they show her getting in a jet with her friend the black lady yes or, or spanish i'm not sure what she is now because her name in the movie is maria but in the comic her name is monica okay um and so i don't understand why they did that and they even um they, they show her nickname, which is Photon, because in the comic, that character becomes a, a Captain Marvel. Okay. So she's a Captain Marvel as well. Um, and then her, her alias is Photon later on in the comics as well. So they kind of give you a nod of that on the side of the plane and show her name, um, her full name or whatever. Um, Easter eggs. We love that. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's, tons, there's tons and tons of Easter eggs in this thing. Um, also, we get a chance to see Captain Marvel's cat, which in the comic, the cat... It's an alien. Yeah, the cat's name is Chewy in the comic, named after Chewbacca. But in the movie, it's Goose, named after... Yeah. Guess. Yeah. Can you guess? Top, top Gun. Top Gun, Goose. That's right, yeah. So there's a lot of a lot of um, changes from the original story to the movie. We get to see a little bit of Ronin. They haven't given us like a lot of uh, Ronin, but they give us a little bit more of Ronin from Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, we see Korath and the other um, Star Force team. 
And I mean, that's about it. So they're just giving us long. There was no Colson in this one either. No, only from like a quick shot of him from behind, like walking into a, a room. You saw that? I saw that. I saw. I also saw um, the accuser there, Ronan. I saw a shot, like same thing, just the back of his head. Yeah. You know what I mean? I did. I missed that. I did not see uh, Colson at all. One thing I noticed is like we got to see her costume, both of them. Oh yeah. In action. I like the red and gold. I like the red and gold. I like her power set, the way they look. Like that last closing segment mm. of the trailer when she's in space blasting spaceships with no, like, just flying just through. Uni- like, yeah, so super, super girlish, yeah, superman. She, she's got that mohawk that we were all waiting to see. Mm. Bro, it looks fresh. And, like, we, show, we saw the, the red, blue, gold suit. And, in action, and then we also saw the green Cree one in action as well. We also got a lot of scrolls. We got a lot of scrolls, a lot of scrolls. and we got a lot of hints at her origin story. Clap. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, a little seems bit like more. they may they may be changing things. They're changing a lot of things from what I like from what from what I'm seeing, especially like from just name names of characters. I don't understand why they're doing that, but I mean. Marvel has they know what they're doing at one point she said she, she's a, a Kree warrior which she's really not though she's she is a human mm-hmm. that gets Kree powers but yeah that's but, not what like even well, when maybe she, she doesn't know, she when doesn't she know. bled her own blood club it was blue nobody makes me bleed my own blood. <laughs> it was blue club <laughs> I mean maybe she to herself you know her knowledge she thinks that she's a Kree right because remember she doesn't remember how she, you know, where she comes from. So maybe she was just agreeing with Nick at that point. Um, yeah, we're getting a lot of Nick Fury in this. You think it's going to be like a buddy cop type of situation? No, no way. You don't it's think just, it's going to be a buddy cop? No, thing? no, we'll, we'll get a lot of him, but it won't be throughout the whole movie. I feel like it'll be, yeah, let's introduce you, do this, but like the whole second and third act is hers. I don't know, man. I think it's going to be like a buddy cop thing. Mm. We'll see. I mean, hey. I'm a fan of Sam Jack, you know, so if he's going to be around, I- I'll welcome it. And let's talk about the villain Talos, man. The the, the, the scroll, the main scroll that yeah. they, they, they show through. They really show him more than anything. I mean, I can't tell. You know, they all look alike. <laughs> Sorry if that's, uh, uh, what is, is it can't be racist. Is it racist when mm. I'm hating against another race? Yeah, an alien race. It's still racism. I guess I'm racist as fuck right now. <laughs> now, nah, they do all look alike, but you can tell the difference between Talos and the other ones. Um, but he, uh, I think, I think it's gonna deliver, man. I can't wait to see this film in its entirety. Um, I'm at this point, I'm kind of checked out of the whole Avengers Four trailer thing because I don't like to be like strung along, and I feel like Marvel at this point is just stringing everyone along. It'll drop when it drops. You know what's gonna happen, right? What's gonna happen? They're gonna drop it Christmas morning, Clep. Christmas morning? Yeah. They're gonna drop it. You know what would be cool if they drop it attached to infinity war on netflix Netflix. christmas day yeah that would be awesome that's different but that's not gonna happen why not because then like only people with netflix will only watch it you know like they don't want that they want as many people as possible to to because netflix will break no netflix Netflix will break if they did that listen their infrastructure is super solid listen they promised us not no dude remember when uh when luke cage dropped for the first time uh netflix shut down yeah, I remember that night Luke vividly. Cage broke the internet. Luke Cage broke Netflix. You couldn't, Yo. you couldn't even watch it. it was like, and look what happened now. Not even three years later, <laughs> canceled. Got the boot. Dude, listen. They said that they were going to promote this thing different from anything they've ever done. I think that would be genius if you could only watch it at the end of Infinity War on Christmas Day. Shit, you know how many people will sign up for Netflix just for that? Exactly. They're looking for more subscribers. They're not because... You know what? Let's talk about it, Clap. Let's talk about it. We're giving Marvel yo, ideas right now. Yo, Marvel is trying to stick the knife to Netflix, bro. And it's apparent with mm. the cancellations of the last few shows. Yeah, but that's Netflix canceling. No. Okay, maybe. But we don't know that. This is my speculation right okay. now. I'm thinking Disney Plus is doing everything possible in order to pull their characters off netflix platform we already seen it with them ending the deal on the movies right Mm -hmm. like 
after a certain point. I, which was it? Which one's the one that's gonna be the last one to come to it? I think it's ne- it's uh, Infinity War. I think War. Captain Marvel is gonna be the last one to come to Netflix. They're gonna actually put Captain Marvel on Netflix. I, I forget which one was the, was the one, but yeah, there's like they already said like, yo, this is gonna be the last one that comes to Netflix. After that, all those movies are going to Disney Plus. Well, we already know that those those shows aren't going to Disney Plus. They've already made that clear. They made that clear, but like, why would I believe them? Why would I believe? Listen, them? I don't think the shows will come. I just think the characters will be around. I hope the characters are. Around. I think the characters will show up in these new shows. Cause like well, like casting Loki. was on point. Yeah, like Loki and uh, and uh, the, the Scarlet Witch Vision. I think a lot of those characters will jump into those shows. Why not? I don't see it happening because these shows need to be like set at a certain time and Mm. it's not now time. You know what I mean? But anyways, bro, we're talking Daredevil cancellation, bro. Season three was amazing. Mm -hmm. Right? Like nothing short for amazing. It wasn't amazing to me. I enjoyed it. It was I enjoyed it. But okay, maybe not season three was amazing. But the show overall. Yeah. Season one, two and three. There were great it was great TV. Mm-hmm. Out of those four shows, was it not your favorite? It and was I my, say was four because I'm not really including Punisher or or Defenders. Right? No, I'm it was about the, Daredevil was my absolute favorite. Yeah, my, me too. Mm-hmm. Me too. I mean, I, I like Jessica Jones too, but like, there's no way she should be the last woman standing. <laughs> like, I'm guessing we won't see a season three of Jessica Jones. We, we probably won't. We won't. And if we do, I'd be very, very shocked. And, like, it's not because season two was bad. In fact, season you better, enjoyed season yeah. two a lot, Clef. Season two is better than one, hands down. You enjoyed it a yeah. lot. And I like, I get that same feeling from a lot of different people. Mm-hmm. But I just don't see that show surviving. Yeah. I really don't. And it's a shame. I just saw a quote from the, uh, the writer mm-hmm. for Daredevil. Yeah. He said, he said, and I quote, I thought the show was too big to fail. It didn't fail. It did. Obviously, it did because it got canceled. Yeah. That, see, this, see, there's a difference between. I don't. I don't know what these guys consider failure when everyone is is tuning in. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's a success. The show's great. You it's know what I mean? It's a success. It was solid writing. You know, like I was happy with Wilson Fisk. That's another thing, bro. Like we're not only losing Daredevil, Matt Murdock, Charlie Cox, right? But we're mm-hmm. also losing Vincent D'Onofrio's. Kingpin, you know, and that sucks. Yeah, but there's always room to bring them in somewhere else. I hope you're right, Club. I hope that this S- is a some, ploy. Somewhere next year, 2019, July ish. <laughs> far from home ish. <laughs> far, far from home ish. Tom no, Holland ish. No, but for real though, like, we're not just losing great heroes, we're losing great villains, right? Like, look at the work they did with. With Point Dexter, oh, you know yeah. what I mean, like, oh, yeah. bro, we're really not gonna see how that turns out. Yeah, I'm disappointed, dude. Like I said, these guys aren't going anywhere, man. I think I think there's a bigger plan ahead of us, and Marvel's just being really secretive about it, and we're gonna we're gonna be surprised. So so okay, timeline, right? Mm-hmm. Luke Cage season two dropped. Yep, it was lukewarm right like i enjoyed it i know you enjoyed it but a lot of people out there weren't feeling it yeah gets canceled Mm -hmm. whoa what's happening yeah you know what i mean then iron fist season two does a complete 180 from season one and it goes from mediocre to actually pretty good pretty damn good but with saying that i mean it was an ensemble show it wasn't it wasn't a standalone. Like it, it wasn't. It wasn't good because it was him. It no. was just good because of the writing. But regardless, it was good writing. Mm. And what happens, even after like, it got critic- critically acclaimed mm-hmm. and cr- critically acclaimed, <laughs> like, it still got canceled. Oh, what's going on? Okay. No way that's going to happen to Daredevil, right? We were wrong. We saw it coming. I Season saw it Season three dropped. It was great get canceled not even like two months after dropping Mm -hmm. now we still got punisher coming up right yep now are you expecting that to go any other way uh no i think they're gonna cancel all the shows i think they're all gonna get canceled which is fine whatever they're listen it's better that they're out on top than oh man that last season was horrible let's cancel them no because there's still 
there's still hope for them. They can go anywhere. They can do anything with these properties. You know what I don't like? It's hard for me to like gauge in my mind, right? Daredevil came out after Arrow. Yep. Arrow's still going strong. It's nowhere near as good as Daredevil. Because it's on purpose, dude. Listen, like I'm telling you, this isn't, they're not failing. They're not leaving because they're not doing well. They're leaving because of contractual agreements in, in, in different directions. These shows are being stopped on purpose. Yeah. They're, it sucks, they're not man. getting cut off because they're not performing. It we sucks. know that these shows are better than anything else that's out there. Look at if Agents of Shield can live on for two more seasons. Seven seasons, Clep. By the time we're done with this, they're gonna have seven seasons in the back. For all we know, Colson may run into all of these guys. That would be great. Exactly. They that could all go to Agents of Shield. That would be great. Then they could do like the Secret Warriors story that they really wanted to do. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like it's just you know, there's just so many other avenues. Like Marvel knows what they're doing, bro. I'm not. I have complete faith. I don't. I'm still mourning the Devil of Hell's Kitchen. Dude, go rewatch it. Oh, I know. <laughs> go There's rewatch it. Always re- rewatch it. We right? still got Captain Marvel and Avengers 4 coming. And I, I personally think that there may be some surprise cameos. Talk about surprise cameos. Mm-hmm. Marvel just dropped a major surprise on us, Clef. Mm-hmm. And that is, bro, minority superhero coming at you. That's right. Marvel is fast tracking production for a Shang-Chi Master of Kung Fu movie. Who are you on this? I'm, I mean, I'm all in. I mean, I I, I feel like they're a little... Huh? I mean, it would have been great if this would have tied in with uh, Iron Fist. And maybe, who knows, maybe Iron Fist will be in this movie. Like, you guys just you just don't understand because it's from the same it's from the same storylines. I know that uh, there's a Master of Kung Fu Hibian issue. Kung Lao? Yeah, there's a Master of Kung Fu um, issue with the Daughters of the Dragon. Okay. Actually, the de- it's Deadly Hands of Kung Fu uh, number one, which features um, Iron Fist and Daughters of the Dragon and the White Tiger. Shout out to Al Mega because that's his that's dude. His, yeah, that's, that's his dude, yeah, who's yeah, also yeah. Latino. Puerto Rican. Yeah, he's a, a Latino. And then, you know, now we have the Asians on deck. Like, yo, dude, Marvel knows what they're doing, bro. I'm, I'm, listen, they're not doing this not on purpose. Iron Fist... Daughters of the Dragon, they're not going anywhere. If anything, they may show up in this Masters of Kung Fu. Clep, there's something you failed to mention, bro. What's that? Is the fact that over the summer, mm-hmm. that movie, Crazy Rich Asians, made crazy big money? How much money did that make? Bro, it was ridiculous amounts of money, and it's getting a sequel. Wow. And Marvel... Is That's a series of books, right? That's a series of books. Yeah. But, like, they realize, you know, hey, man, let's empower the women. Let's give minorities their own, you know what I mean? I, I, someone to look at on screen, you know what I mean? Because, like, people like us, the geeks out there, mm-hmm. yo, these people are coming out to see whether it's a woman, a, a, a child, mm. you, know, you know what I mean? A, my, a black person, a white person, a, a, a Chinese, Asian, you know, Latino, whatever. Like, mm-hmm. we're out there. But the people that you're representing, they're going to come out extra hard. And that's what's going to happen with, you know, Shen Ching. Yeah, especially if they do it right, and they gotta have the right cast in that man. Who's who's your Asian picks for this? Ooh, ooh. Who's your you Asian picks? You know what? Picks? I don't know his name, mm. but the homie from um, fuck, Into the Badlands. What's his name? Into the Badlands. I think he's Daniel Wu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. That dude is um. Didn't he play uh in the Bruce Lee story? Was he in there? I think he. Is may his have... name Daniel Wu? Yeah, it's Daniel Wu. Bro. Daniel Wu, I want, I've been wanting to see him in a Marvel movie forever. He took part in the last Tomb Raider movie. Oh yeah, he, he was, was like the sidekick. Yeah, yeah, he was yeah, good. He was good in that. Um, yeah, I thought, I thought he, I could have sworn he did a. What do you think, bro? What do you think of my of my casting right now? I, I like him. You gotta have him in that. You gotta definitely have. Uh, you gotta put some Jackie Chan in something like this. Yeah, man. yeah, obviously. You, you, you got, you got to. Um, this is nostalgia factor, you know, like we. You know, it will hit us in the heart. Yeah. Um. What about Tony Ja? A Tony, Tony Ja is um. His English is not great, so that's tough. You know, he's been in tons of movies, and and he's definitely got the physicality to play. And I mean, bro, 
you just gotta watch any of the redemption movies and you know this guy's a real life superhero <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, like he didn't need that Steve Rogers formula. Like that's Tony Ja. That's all he does. You know. Um, what about uh, IP Man? He's too old, Clef. He could do something. No, Donnie, Donnie Yen? Yen is too old. Donnie Yen is too old. He's great. Like he could be in it, just like you said, Jackie Chan. For this nostalgia. guy looks like he's like thirty, bro. No, no, it's because just like black don't crack, neither does Asian, yo, bro. Yo, this guy looks so young. No, nah, yo, <laughs> no, no, he's not Su Young. He's Donnie Yen. <laughs> and, and he's like in his fifties, bro. I guarantee you. Oh well, yeah, he was born in '63, kid. Bro, like you know what I'm saying. He's good though. This, listen, there's wrong. a role for all of these guys. That's right. But Cleb, are you like do you see this as the right move for Marvel? I think yeah, I mean, at this point like and this is what I always say about DC is like these guys have so many properties and so many characters and they rely solely on the same ones over and over. Like if I see another goddamn Batman anything, I might fucking lose my shit. I don't want to see anything else Batman, Gotham City, Joker, anything. I'm good. Like, you guys have a roster of artists, I mean, of characters, and you think all the DC fanboys and fangirls say that DC is so much better than Marvel, but yet they've only been focusing on the same four characters for the last decade and more. Yeah. So if DC is really the superior comic company, we should be seeing a lot more DC characters. So I'm going to challenge Marvel with the same thing. Yeah, we love Iron Man. Yeah, we love Spider-Man. Yeah, we love Captain America. But now it's time to get a little diverse and do things outside the box and stop bringing that roster to life. Because at this point now, people are paying attention. You can build up the next character. It's fine. I want to see Kamala Khan in Captain Marvel, even if she's like a young girl. Yeah. I want to see Kamala Khan come out in Captain Marvel, a.k.a. Ms. Marvel. Yo, Clep, so are you familiar with Shang Shang? I just like that because I'm not. Like, uh, I'm not. I'm not super, super like into that comic. Like I've never really do- dove into that. I do know, however, like Daughters of the Dragon featured, Iron Fist featured in that, White Tiger featured in that. Um, but like I said, I, I'm more, m- more or less with the, the 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 more popular characters. Okay, so you. But don't... that came out around a time when like the Kung Fu era was like big, yeah. like the seventies, early eighties, Kung Fu theater on Saturday mornings that type of thing like that was a big deal okay so okay now hearing you say that Mm -hmm. and you don't know the character that well Mm -hmm. will you still are you still interested like are you gonna be there on opening day absolutely anything Marvel I'm all about yeah because like I said it's gonna be part of the I'm pretty sure to be part of the bigger cinematic universe it has to be they've yet to do like a side project that's not yeah I mean it doesn't it doesn't make sense for them to do that they might as well start tying all these in Bro, who knows? We may even get a cameo of this character in Avengers 4. Whoa. Like, I'm just telling you. Like, Marvel's smart, bro. They're playing a long game. They're playing a long game. So know? what's the timeline? What's the timeline? You think fast tracking means 2019 or 2020? Because I'm thinking 2020. We're already practically in 2019. Like, there's no way they're going to be able to, you know, shoot post-production and casting all within one year. Um, right? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know and what they're marketing, doing. right? Like, cause for for a character like this that's not so well known, mm-hmm. they might need to put you know a little extra into their marketing. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I, it just. I mean, people know about it already, dude. If you if you guys want to know exactly, excuse me, how popular this character that we're talking about is, just take for a second and go to eBay and look up. The first appearance of uh, Mas- Masters of Kung Fu, number fifth, uh, special Marvel edition number fifteen. Just say that special Marvel edition fifteen. Look up the comic book; it'll pop up automatically. Sang Chi Masters of Kung Fu comic, and you will see the price that this first appearance of that character is going for. I see four thousand dollars. I see twelve twelve hundred dollars. I see four hundred and fifty dollars. I see $280. This is for the first appearance of that character. So if you want to know how popular Sang Sang Chi is, Masters of Kung Fu, special Marvel edition number 15, look it up for yourself. Brother, I'm all about it. So, I'll be there opening night. Mm. You know what I mean? I'm going to bring my kimono out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm going to be extra comfortable, Migs. bro. <laughs> I'm going to be extra comfortable. Yeah. Yo, Clep, since we were talking about 
Disney Plus and their future plans and other ones of their of their shows mm -hmm. coming, Marvel shows yeah. officially confirmed. We talking about Vision and Scarlet Witch, or is it Scarlet Witch and the Vision? It's Vision and the Scarlet Witch, which is an actual comic series that is available for purchase. There's volume one and a volume two of that. So if you guys are into that collection thing like me, you might want to jump on it now because the price for some reason hasn't jumped yet because this news is not known to everybody. Yeah, and like look at what happened to Shan Ching, right? Like his freaking comics just got dumb expensive after that announcement came. Yep, out. and I'm still looking at Vision and the Scarlet Witch comics for under ten bucks. Crazy. So and it's because you know sometimes Marvel announces things and then they don't end up you know panning through so the hype for it hasn't hasn't grown yet but i guarantee by the time avengers 4 hits theaters this comic is uh it's gonna be up there yeah right? it's 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 not gonna be it's not gonna be a game yo clip so vision and the scarlet witch like are we what time period is gonna take place is it gonna take place in between avengers 4 and age of ultron where she I, runs away I, actually civil war right i think it might be i think because i think we might get uh, a little bit of house of m oh, which would be cool um it would be super cool and if we don't i mean i don't i don't well yeah unless vision comes back i mean we don't I mean, he has to right no not necessarily you think he's gonna be the only nah bro sure sure he saved them bro Sure, we said, how did she save him? With she no downloaded him. She got a copy, son. She's copying. <laughs> she she just got a paste. She backed him up on she the hard control drive. Control C. <laughs> now she just got to just control V, bro. We all know these tricks, Clef. She backed him up on the hard drive. Yeah, that's what she was working. She had enough time. She's she's a genius. <laughs> she did it. Uh, but okay, so House of M, huh? Yeah, I mean that's my theory. I I, I doubt that it's going to be after the uh, the events of Avengers. Yeah, um, it has to be during that time that they said that she runs away and and he turned off his. And GPS these aren't even these something. aren't even long seasons. They're only like eight episodes. They're right? only yeah, very short. Just like the Loki. Remember these these actors are like movie actors. Clef. These yeah. aren't. Not I mean not to talk bad about TV actors, but you know like TV actors tend to be more free with their schedule you know how long they're willing to work you know yeah. movies aren't really that same type of game you know mm. they out there they want to shoot for two three months and be done you know while a tv show might shoot, shoot for most of the year eight nine months mm -hmm. now we definitely getting paul bethany right yeah yeah he's definitely on board they already confirmed that that he's gonna be um in this which i'm pretty hyped for i'm glad i'm pretty glad that that's um that that's happening Bro, it's it's cool. His um his storyline that took place, cause cause this storyline started way in the first Iron Man movie, you know, to where he's at now. Jarvis, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Paul um, Bethany. Yeah, bro. Yeah. So like, anyone that doesn't realize the Vision character is the voice of Tony Stark's uh, AI AI from the very first movie. from the very very first Iron Man. Um, yeah, I mean he's he's been he's he's an OG. I mean, if any, if you want to say Robert Downey was responsible for starting this thing, I mean he's he's more just as you know responsible as well. You yeah. know, so um, I also like that nod to him that they gave us in Agent Carter, mm -hmm. the TV series, because the the Jarvis, yeah, right? yeah, 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 the actual Jarvis. I wish we could have had more, you know, a connection of what was going to happen in that. Um, that guy, where do I know him from? Who's that? The guy who played Jarvis. He just is very funny. Oh, he's been on lots of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's been in lots of things. I've seen him in a lot of things. Yeah. But Clef, yeah, brother. Uh, Marvel's had a very busy week, just like you mentioned. You know, we went over the Captain Marvel trailer. We went over Vision and Scarlet Witch, mm -hmm. Daredevil Cancellation, mm -hmm. Shang-Chi. And if you want to find... All of this stuff, you can check it out over at wearecritics.com. This is where we, the critics, provide all of our links, all of our information, all mm -hmm. our videos. You can find the podcast there. Yes, sir. You know what you I mean? You can find everything. Wearecritics.com, wearecriticsmusic.com. Mm -hmm. If you're more into the music thing, you know? Uh, you can also check us out on our social media platforms. 
on uh, Instagram. We are critics. We are critics comics. We are critics music. Or you can check us out on YouTube where we have most of our interviews and things that we've been, you know, when we're hitting these comic cons up, there's a lot of, uh, a little bit of footage. We also have new footage coming up and things like that, photographs and stuff that you can catch on our social media. Read our stories on Instagram. Check us out on Twitter. Um, we're everywhere, man. Yeah, man. Yo, Club, you said that you are excited for Runaway Season 2. I am. December 21st. I am. With that Hulu kid. <laughs> so, you told me you were also watching Cloak and Dagger. Rewatching, that is. Yeah, so I, I got to rewatch Runaways 2 because I need to brush up. I really barely remember it because it, it was out. I don't know. I just feel like it was out around the time when it was a lot of stuff we were consuming and doing, like around the Comic-Cons and things like that. So, yeah. um, I've yet to watch it. You haven't watched it at all? Either oh, one yeah, of the so shows. You, so you didn't. So Cloak and Dagger, I think you really like. It's it's really cool. It's slow paced, but it's it's good. The the payoff at the end of the season is pretty cool. Um so I went back to that just to brush up on it and I was like, wow, this was a really good series. I can't wait to see what they do in season two. And I hope there's a lot of tie ins and stuff like that. Um Yeah, man. So yeah, but then Runaways, I gotta brush up on that. December twenty first, I'm really excited about it because I did like the tone of the show. Um, I've only watched one episode and I enjoyed it. So I'm excited to see more. You know, I got to finish season one. And like you said, December 21st will be here before we know it. And they're doing something a little different that Hulu doesn't tend to do. Mm -hmm. And that's they're dropping the whole season all at once. Yeah. Yeah. Because last time they, they did it, like it was like week to week or something yeah, week like to that. week, which is what they usually do with the originals. You know, it's yeah. what they did with Castle Rock is what they do. with yeah. The path is what they do with uh, what's the show that Mark D Handmaid's Tale. Yeah, I, I always forget that. Oh, title. Handmaid's Week to Week, too. Yeah. Hands. All of those is week to week. And that's mm. fine. You know? Cool. I'm a week to week watcher. That's fine with me. You mm. know what I'm saying? Talking about week to week, Club. I'm over here watching. The very first episode of a new series, who I mentioned it earlier today, Night Flyers, from George R. R. Martin on Sci-Fi. This is you love that sci -fi the shit, author man. of Game of Thrones. You know, this is based on his Night Flyers novella that came out way forever ago. But I want to pitch it to you, Clep. I know, wait, I know wait, you're wait, not. Wait, I know you're not gonna be all before, about it. Before you pitch it, yeah. How's the production quality? Very high. Sci-fi. Sci-fi. No, no, no. It's high. Everything I've seen so far, it's like, it's high. It's up there. Yeah. Space looks like space. Mm. You know what I mean? Uh, zero gravity looks awesome. I'm checking out a trailer right now as you tell me this. Go ahead, pitch it. Let me, let me pitch you the show, right? So George R. R. Martin comes through with a horror space tale. Okay. You know what I mean? It's so not like, that So like fantasy. alien, like alien, aliens, yep. the thing. And I'm still not sure what's going on. So like, like I said, I watched episode one and episode two. And I did it specifically to pitch it to you today. Okay. So it opens, which what I believe might be the end of the series. Or at least the end of season one. Okay. Uh, that doctor right there, she's running around the ship. Uh, some dude's chasing her. Next thing you know, she grabs a, a recording device. Yeah. She puts out a message. Says, this is Dr. Blah, 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 blah okay. of the Night Flyer. Okay. This is not a warning. Do not board this ship. Okay. Do not bring this ship back to Earth. And let's, let me and guess. They don't listen. And then she to kill herself. What? Yes. So that's how it opens, right? Yeah. So then it goes to like flashback you know we get to meet some of the crew members so they're basically it's the year 2084 okay damn that's they're cool. on a mission to intercept with a alien ship it's very far away from earth okay but earth is dying you see mm. they don't have much of a choice okay these aliens they're more advanced than us okay We've been trying to communicate with them for at least 20 years, but they don't want nothing to do with us. We send them math equations. We send them music. We send them everything, bro. They're just ignoring us. So it just so happens that around the same time, mm. humanity starting to evol evolutionize. Okay. And there's these things called the L7s. I'm not sure what they call them that. But they're basically the next version of human beings. They have like these... Uh, these powers, right? Yeah. Like Jean Grey and X-Men, you know, mm -hmm. like she can get in your mind, see your thoughts, attack your brain, make you hurt yourself. What the fuck? You know what I mean? But because they have these powers, mm -hmm. people fear them and they tend to be, you know, 
assholes because you know at least this guy that it's on the ship so they okay the story we go into intercept with this alien ship right mm -hmm. the reason we're bringing this telepath is because like i told you the aliens don't want to talk with us yeah so now the the main dude who's in like in charge of this this thing he's saying oh maybe they communicate telepathically so we bring this guy but bringing this guy in the ship with us might just kill us all because this guy you know they're super violent and shit mm -hmm. but it's a horror show eventually essentially you had me at the opening where it kind of starts at the end yes and then she kind of offs herself yes like i thought that was interesting and that that really pulled me in it's kind of like scream right like when they yeah. killed the most uh notable per uh actress or actor in the show in like the beginning right, the yeah opening. That's what I see, because that's Gretchen Maul. I've seen her in shows like uh, Boardwalk Empire. You know, mm. she's awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm totally interested. I, I don't think I'll jump on it right away, but it's interesting. Because you know, I don't really fuck with sci-fi like that. Yeah, I know you don't. I know you don't. <laughs> um, but this is horror, though. Yeah. And like around the Christmas time, yo, I remember last year mm -hmm. around this time, sci-fi gave me happy. That show Happy with oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Christopher Which Maloney. Which is a comic book, actually. Yeah, Christopher Maloney, Pat and Oswald. Mm -hmm. like, and I love that, like having that during the holidays. Mm -hmm. And like, I'm thinking this is going to be my show for, for the holidays, you know? Is that, did that, that show didn't get canceled, right? Happy? Happy? No, I believe Happy's coming back for a second season. Um, Al, Al Mega, shout out to him. He yeah. has he has the first, the first, uh, oh, yeah? Yeah, the first appearance. Of that comic. Yeah, it's good stuff, man. It really is. Quite for um, what do you think? What do you think? Night Flyers? Yeah, you name? Um, I, 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 I would start it, but I don't know if I'll, you know. Continue? Yeah. I would definitely say to you and to the critics out there, you know, if, if you're into space shows, if you like horror, if you like space horror movies, mm -hmm. you know, Check this out. Event Horizon. Remember Event Horizon? I do remember that. Oh, love that. Yeah. It's, it's, it's awesome, bro. It's awesome. Um, Clep, but that's all I have for Marvel and sci-fi. I want to jump into DC real quick because okay. DC's got making some moves out here. The Joker film, the Joaquin Phoenix Joker film, yep. officially wrapped. About time. I was getting worried about that because they just kept dropping so many like clips, man. I was like, what the hell? Well, that's just people on the street, right? Well, I mean, they're not out there. That Listen, there's no such things as leaks, all right? If, if the production company doesn't want something out there, it's not going to get out there. Really? Yeah. Because I've seen a bunch of pictures of Liam Neeson just walking through Worcester right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah but... Leaks. Yeah, but that stuff's on purpose, bro. I Listen, I spoke to production of that company, and no press was allowed. Yeah. So... Regular people walking on the street just posting shit, it's not happening. Yeah. If they don't want it out there, they're not going to put it out there. I talked to the source. And they said no press has been approved. You were trying to get me that, that I was, extra I was, I was, job. Listen, I was trying to get critics in there, man. I know, when you know, I know people, you know people. And maybe sometimes people you know can do good things for you. But Clef, you know, I in need this case. An extra, right? Listen, in this case, business is business and they got to do what they got to do. And I understand that and you I don't know? hate on that at all because, hey, I make business decisions all the time and not my, it might not be the best for the critics out there mm -hmm. always, but, you know, it's it's the best for business. It's, yeah. It's what I learned from Vince McMahon. <laughs> we do what's <laughs> best for business over here. Yeah. So we got a, we got a name for Robert De Niro's character. What's in this his name? Murray Franklin. Okay. It sounds like he might be some type of senator or... Yeah. Politician. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what that means. Nothing to me. I don't know who Murray Franklin is in the DC universe. Sophie Dunman is Zazzy Beats. Okay. And then Arthur Fleck is the Joker. Wow, Arthur, huh? They're going with that. They're going with that. Arthur Fleck. I'm still interested in this, and I'm still waiting. What do you think? This is a summer movie club? Um, it has to be right because a film like this doesn't need most a lot of post production, right? No, this is actually coming out October 4th. So, okay. So a little under a year from now. Yep. Okay, I'm excited. I could wait for this. It might be a great fall movie, you know. Todd Phillips, Martin right. Scorsese. You know what? I don't remember. Did they did they say if they were going to go uh, rated R with this? I don't remember. You know what? I believe rated R is the actual aim. 
but with these things sometimes they spend all this money and they figure the best way to get a return on the investment is to get as many people in theater as possible mm. so that's what they might just do dude there are so many still shots pictures images videos of this thing being produced it's ridiculous like there's so many images of this and i don't know if it's too much or what but they look cool as shit yeah. i'll tell you that much like a lot of the i mean he reminds me of caesar yeah, Romero. yeah you know what i mean like he's got that 1966 batman vibe going um i wish it the best though i'll be there first day for sure for I'll sure be there. another one movie that you might want to be there for the first day clep mm. is uh blue beetle that's right dc is bringing a latino superhero to the big screen and that's gonna be great i mean it's gonna be amazing though i really like the way they portray blue beetle's powers you know it's like he is a uh he essentially has a parasite stuck to him but it's an alien parasite that it's kind of like venom you know like it it's, has a mind of its own um except it's more like technological mm -hmm. than the symbiote right the symbiote was like it, it was organic matter this is more like uh a machine if you will okay now you are you are you familiar with Blue Beetle? I'm very familiar with Blue Beetle, but mo mostly through my man Al Mega Comic Crusader. Shout out! Um, he hits one of his favorites. He's you know he's all about the Latino characters yeah, and, and stuff like that. So, so yeah, I, I what I know I know from him. I don't know much. I don't know the origin or anything like that. Did you watch him in like? I'm not big on DC as a lot of people know. So did you watch him in any of the uh, Teen Titans or any of those shows that he's been on? No. He even had his his own TV show for a while, I believe. Cartoons. Yeah. I didn't watch that though. Yeah. Um. But no, I I'm personally I'm super excited for. I I I forget his name. Was was he Migs too? Was he Miguel son? Because I might just have to audition. You know what I mean, like, who knows? But anyways, let me take a quick break, yo. I I. I the critics will be back with you guys in just one second. Okay, so we back now. Sorry for that. I just had to take a quick break. So like I was saying, bro, Ray, Jamie Reyes is the actual name. J Jamie Reyes, Blue Beetle? Jamie Reyes, Blue Beetle. Well, so Blue we got to get Al Meg on, on the podcast so we could talk Blue oh, Beetle he'll go all and White in, Tiger. Right? Yeah. Yeah, bro. Hey, listen, I'm excited for this. And if they really um, go all in, this might be a great move for them. Yeah, I think it's going to be a good move. He looks cool. He looks super cool. So that means they might be doing a Booster Gold movie soon, too, then. You know what? Booster Gold. He was supposed to be on that Krypton series. Was he? Yeah, but they switched it up and they went with, like, another time traveler. I feel like that, time, that show is too dark. You know, they were having a, a marathon the other night. I almost went ahead and recorded everything. Because, like, I recorded it back in the day, but, yeah. like, I switched services. So, like, I Is that show even recorded. good? I only watched the first episode and yeah, I wasn't I just, feeling it. I can't it. get with DC shows. I try. Just that's a sci-fi I want too. <sighs> Look at that DC and sci-fi on the one project. You're like, nope. <laughs> uh, listen, that's let me stop because sci-fi one day they're gonna be like, yo, fuck clap. Nah, listen, I fuck with sci-fi. It's just some of the movies that I grew up on back in the day. Yeah. The, the production quality, man. Like they were like really good B movies. Really, really good B movies, man. And so. what happened now, bro? They still that, you know. We got the tour, the Sharknados out there. Uh, I listen. I still remember Ticks. Ticks? You don't remember the movie Ticks? No. Uh, Alfonso Ribeiro was in it. Yo, Carlton. Carlton was in it, dude. Ah, uh, the cheese, man. What was the tick? The tick, like a little ticks. They were like alien giant ticks. Oh. Nah, I don't. I don't remember those. Like, was it like a creature feature? Yeah, it was. Whoa. Horrible creature feature. Um, dude, you got to look at it. You know what? I'm, I'm going to have to YouTube it one day for you. Yeah, no, no. Gonna I'm going to I'm gonna have to add it to the list because now I'm I'm curious. You know, maybe this is what killed his career doing <laughs> movies for sci-fi. <laughs> fresh of Fresh Prince. You, you, know? you said it, not me. Hey, listen. He has something going. And next thing you know, he does a sci-fi movie. And now no one wants to hire the man. That's what happens. Oh my God! Seth Green was in Seth that too. Green too. Yeah, he survived. <laughs> he actually went on to, 
Yo, he's like co looking cool and shit. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, we're watching that right now, yeah. guys. If you guys didn't know in the background. This Yo, Clip, is... let's keep it moving, bro. Yeah. Fuller House season four. What do you think? This, I'm surprised. Like, good for them that this is even lasting as long as it did. I mean, it says a lot about the nostalgia, you know, the feeling that people have for the show. I can't believe it's already on its fourth season. I can't believe, like, people actually watch it. I tried watching it. It just wasn't for me. But and it might be not like aim at me, you know what I mean? It has the same the same vibe as the original, you know what I mean? Like I enjoy the original then. I don't think I would now. I watched the first two seasons and I liked them. Yeah. I didn't get a chance to watch the third one. Um so them having a fourth, I'm very shocked that it's even still lasted this long. So. Is it changing with time? Like or is it still like aiming to be I mean it's still full house. it's still full house it's just them older like you know like the adults are not the kids anymore so it's I mean I like it it's, it feels like it's grown a little bit you know I, feel I think like it would be a little bit better if they didn't so much rely on Uncle Jesse and all of them oh they still show up a lot oh they show up a lot like, Bob they're like Saget too part, they're part of the cast man well the first two seasons I saw they were like uh, there a lot oh shoot Danny Uncle Danny Tanner, Jesse, yeah, Danny Uncle what's Tanner. What's his face? Uh, um, Joey. Joey, huh? Yeah. Cut, Cut it out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was just about to do that. <laughs> That's a classic. Yeah. That's a classic. That cut. It. Didn't we see him at a con recently? No. No? No. Are no, you no, sure? No. Yeah, none of them were there. Anyway. None of them were there. Anyway. Yo, Clep. We got some competition out here when it comes to the cast, bro. We got a, a heavyweight coming out. Who? Bro, Ron Burgundy, Will Ferrell is doing an Anchorman podcast. Dude, that's kind of classic. That's going to be great, but I'm worried, bro. Why is that? Because, bro, like I'm out here trying to eat, <laughs> you know, and then, and then we get we get someone like Will Ferrell, who's, who's like super comedic guy, you know, like, you know, that's going to be great. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. I think I think. I'm tuning in. I'm sorry. I know we got our own thing going, but yeah, I'm going no, to hey, be tuning I'm, in I'm going to have to, too. But listen, <laughs> he signed up, from what I understand, to two seasons, mm -hmm. 12 episodes. Now, is this going to be like a series or just a podcast? It's, is this vis visual or audio? Audio, from what I understand. But listen, this is a collaboration with Funny or Die, which I believe is his company, On too. On iHeartRadio. And iHeartRadio, yes. Uh, but yeah, Will Ferrell reprising Ron Burgundy. Um, who do you want to see from the channel, <laughs> the news team joining him on this podcast adventure? Brian Fantana. <laughs> Who's that? Who's that? <laughs> Come on. That's a dude. That's part of his team. This, that's, no, um, that's Paul Rudd. That's Paul Rudd. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. You want to see Champ? Whammy? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I Whammy. Wanna, I want to see. I actually, I want to see the whole team. Yeah. yeah Eventually, yeah. we got to have the whole team, including uh, Steve Carell. Yeah. And his, Break. Break. <laughs> I, I, you think they're gonna give us bilingual bloodbaths, <laughs> dude? Like, it's he's funny alone, but imagine if he brings the team in, dude. It's a wrap. Yeah, it's a wrap. Do you think Ron Burgundy knows what a podcast is? I think we're gonna have fun finding out. Yeah. <laughs> I think because he's like going through all the channels of new media. Oh, you know what man. I mean? So like, you know, things change for him in the, in the movie when the first woman anchor. Then he goes on the world news. Damn, I remember. Yo, the and then he does one the was first. Really bad. It wasn't. Remember Kanye was in it. Wasn't Drake Every, in everybody it? Everybody was. <laughs> everyone. <laughs> Will, horrible. Will Smith was in it. Will Smith was in it. Everyone was in it. Remember when they had the news team fight at the second yeah, one? Yeah. Everyone showed up. Will Smith was there. Oh god. <laughs> I'm gonna have to. The legend continues, right? Yep. I have. I have it. Yeah, I'm gonna have to rewatch it. But well, that's all I have for the critics this week, man. It's been a long episode. I want to thank you guys for hanging in there with us. Shout out for Disney for doing all the good things and the bad things. I, I still remember Daredevil. I'm not over it. Rest in peace, Daredevil. All right. For now. All right. Pete. You know what they did? They finger snapped all the Netflix shows Damn. just like they did all our favorite heroes. But they'll be back. I'm telling you, they'll Soul be back. Stone. You got to have faith. Yo, imagine if this is all swerve. How great would that be? Dude, I'm telling you, I don't trust anything Marvel does. You see what they do to us with trailers? They pur purposely put out trailers with scenes that aren't even in the movie. These dudes playing games. Like, they CGI'd the stones out of Thanos' glove. These dudes They put the Hulk games. 
in Wakanda when he never shows up. These dudes are like, playing games. So I don't, I don't, I don't believe anything that they said. Yo, Clep, leave the critics with a little something up. As always, man, this is Critics Talk, and we want you guys to make sure that you wake up, be passionate, create, and repeat. Critics Talk.